yeah, I saw you in the discussion with last week with Kay and uh, Jakub, is what I said earlier. That's the. Uh, Did you see our recorders? Sorry? Did you see our recorders? It was recorded, yeah. Oh, so, I didn't watch it. Yeah, it's on, uh, it's on Soko Films. I saw, I saw Mr. Mr. Brown because I found Mr. Brown because I was looking okay. for it, but I didn't see the Yeah, if you go on Soko it. Films, it will be on there. The details, but so um, you was asking questions, which is why I asked you over there. Do you come from a Unitarian perspective? Well, do you pray to Jesus? I pray in the name of Jesus. Um, in the Bible, it does. He was asked, "How do we pray?" Yes, and he gave, did he gave the instructions. Lord's did he give instructions yes. to pray to himself? To the Father. To the and he also, ah, but he also says that that you ask for in my name, you will be given. So he was asking questions that we often hear from Unitarians, yeah. oneness, Pentecostals, or flat-out Sabellians. You know, people who openly admit that. Um, so Pentecostal, what's the word for oneness? Denominations with this. Okay, so 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 the heresy really started with a man called. Um, well, it's given the name Sabalianism, okay, which is okay. comes from the man Sabalius, mm -hmm. but it actually began slightly before him by a man called Praxius, mm -hmm. okay, and then it we now see it today: people rejecting the Trinity, believing that the Father, Son, and Spirit are all the same person, and there are different kind of uh, groups that will vary in slightly different ways. So, okay. what's what's your perspective? I understand oh. you disagree with the Trinity yeah, and yeah. the deity of okay, Christ. Okay, well, I make I make my point clear, right? I believe, well, I believe that. The religion is based on scripture, yeah? Um, and so it's a scripture-based religion, and therefore we should only take our teachings from the scripture. Now that being, what do I believe? Do I believe that Jesus was God? Um, whether there's a trinity who's involved in that, one way or the other? No. I believe that the, if we're going to accept that the Bible is true, we have to take the Bible for what it says. And uh, let's focus on what Jesus says himself directly. Okay. At no point does Jesus say... Can we do that, one point at a time, though? Otherwise, we're going to roll Yeah, yeah well, just many, to explain yeah. myself. Yeah. I, um, I've read the Bible. Let's say, for example, take the Gospel of Mark. You read the Gospel of Mark from, from one end to the other. At no point in any, anywhere in that, in that Gospel would you find anywhere that supports that Jesus is God or that he considers himself God. Okay. The only thing he describes himself is a prophet. And so reading the Gospel of Mark, I take what Jesus says, I accept that he is a prophet. I understand a prophet to be a messenger from God. Now okay. when Jesus went from one place to the other, he never proclaimed himself as God. He said, God has sent me. Okay, can I answer that? Please. Okay, so I, I agree with your, I agree with what you're saying in a sense that we are a scripture-based religion, which is why I've now got the scripture in my hand, because we go to the scripture to see what it says. But we have to also look through the lenses of the early church, because if we bear in mind, you know, people like St. Irenaeus, okay. Can Saint, I interrupt? Oh, I didn't interrupt you, so give me a second. Sure, sure, One sure. second. You can pick up after. Yeah, yeah. So St. Irenaeus was taught by a man called Polycarp, mm -hmm. who was taught by the Apostle John. It's just to clarify, like one, one just second. to clarify where you are, what one you second, mean by early church. The early church, I mean the first Christians. The early Christians, the, the ones that came after the Apostles, and then we continue to see a tradition that goes along with them, okay? okay. So let me continue my point. Mm -hmm. So we have, to view the, we have to view scriptures through the lens of people like that. Because if Irenaeus was taught by Polycarp, who was taught by John, mm. okay, when we see Irenaeus has clearly had this kind of apostolic succession where it comes from Christ to John to Polycarp to Irenaeus, and Irenaeus teaches his disciples that you know Jesus is God, his, his deity, okay, mm. I think we should take that seriously because the view that you have where Jesus isn't fully divine actually comes much later, okay, and the early church, when they, for, for example, the Council of Nicaea. Uh, all the councils, they wasn't just arguing from scripture, they was arguing what was also passed down through tradition, through the early church, from the apostles. For example, Saint Basil uh, writes a book and he, he mentions this, and Irenaeus mentions this. All the early church fathers men mention this tradition that's been passed down from the apostles to their disciples, to their disciples, to their disciples. So we can trace the doctrine of the Trinity right back, and I can show you from early church fathers' writings that, you know, that, that that's true. But, so I would say that's, that's where I stand with that. We should look at tr scripture, of course, but we should also look through the lenses of the church, of the early church, because there, one second, because there are people like Jehovah's Witnesses who will say, well, I also just read the scripture and I come to a different conclusion, mm. but they would differ with, with what the earliest disciples were taught. Mm. Picking up on your second point, you said Mark's gospel mm -hmm. is just portrays Jesus as a, but, as a prophet. But, partic particularly Mark's gospel, because I would say in Matthew and I believe Luke, Jesus is more exalted, but I would still still debate with you that he never proclaims or anywhere else states that he is God. Okay, we can go there. So, you see what I'm saying? So, yeah. if I could just just say make a point, 
you seem to be saying that we need more than the Bible, that we need to read outside of the Bible. And I would say that we should only have, we should only have to rely on the Bible. Now, if we gave someone the Bible, not, the, um, not a Bible that has been tampered with, we've had words added, it's had words taken out. We give someone who has no idea about the concept of, of, um, of Trinity, of Jesus being God, the divinity of Christ, none of these things, that doesn't have any of these concepts. He, goes in, he or she goes into a room just with the Bible and an open mind. I can't imagine how or why anyone is going to walk out of that room after reading the Bible and have the idea of a trinity and have the idea of, of, Jesus, of Jesus being God because it okay. simply doesn't say it anywhere. Okay, let me pick you up on that. I, I was trying. And it, sh and it sh should. Okay, okay. I believe it does and I'll show you why. So you said that, um, I wrote down what you said, that, so we should only rely on the Bible, okay? And yeah, I agree, we have the Bible. That should be our source by which we, we go to. But at the same time, you have to recognise historically, the Bible came out of the church the church did not come out of the Bible. For example, um, before there was even a, a Bible, Christians were still functioning quite fine without the Bible. You have the, the Philippian church, the, the, uh, you know, the Corinthians, the Galatians, uh, the, the Thessalonians. They didn't have the New Testament, okay? So they didn't have the, the full canon. We know that they did have at some point because even Peter in his epistles mentions the epistles of Paul, okay? So we know that they did have some of the writings, but they didn't have a full canon and they still functioned as Christians just fine. So I would, I would disagree with your statement there. But secondly, you, you mentioned Mark doesn't portray Jesus as God. And I would say- well, none of them, one, please, none uh, of them. Okay, we can, so none of the gospels? None of the gospels. Are you sure? None of them. Okay, let, let's go there, okay. So let me walk through some of the passages in the Bible because you're a Bible man and I appreciate that. Mm. So, well, it, should be. Uh, so in, terms of, in terms of Mark, Okay, not portraying Jesus as God. I would disagree based on the very first three verses. Let me read them to you mm -hmm. and let me give you some historical context. Please, yeah. So chapter one, verse one, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the son of God. Okay, that, that clearly there is much more than a prophet. Let me continue. Verse two and three, and we know this because of verse two and three, by the way, because mm -hmm. in verse two and three, yeah. it says these words, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, which is talking about Isaiah chapter 40, verse three, okay? As we see, written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, mm. who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Now, in that mm. passage it's quoting from, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse three, mm. the Lord there is, is referring to God, because it says, prepare the way for the Lord your God. So when Mark quotes from Isaiah chapter 40, verse three, and then says that there's going to be a messenger in the wilderness according to Isaiah and if you continue to read Isaiah he clearly portrays John the Baptist as the one in the wilderness preaching and who does John the Baptist prepare the way for? Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the way, so the one who has his way prepared for him is the Lord. Mark points this out to be Jesus. He points the messenger in the wilderness out to be John the Baptist. So I would say from the very first three verses mm -hmm. of Mark's Gospel the divinity of Christ is clearly laid out. But then you go into chapter 2 Mark has Jesus forgiving sins. And what do the Jews say? The Jews say, uh, basically, who does this man think he is? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And they're right to say that, because who can forgive sins but God alone? Who can give that kind of authority? So what did Jesus then say? I say this so that you know that I have the authority to forgive sins. Mm. So he didn't say, hold on guys, you misunderstood me. I wasn't saying I'm actually forgiving these sins. On the contrary, he said, I'm telling you, I have the authority to forgive sins. Mm. So he's actually backing up their claim that only God can forgive sins. He's saying I am forgiving sins. So the logical conclusion from that is he's claiming to be God. Mm. And you said Matthew and Luke don't portray Jesus as God. Again, I would disagree. In Matthew chapter two, you have Jesus being worshiped. Later on in Matthew, you have Jesus being worshiped. In Luke's Gospel, chapter seven or nine, you also have Jesus being worshipped. Mm -hmm. And um, in Matthew chapter 12, okay, in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus says that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Now, when we look at the Sabbath, who established the Sabbath? God established the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So if God is the one who set up the Sabbath, and Jesus says, I am Lord of the Sabbath, he's claiming to be the God who set up the Sabbath. And not only does he do that uh, in Matthew, he does that in John. In John chapter eight, verse 58, he says, before Abraham was, I am. That's coming from Exodus 3.14. You're saying too many things. One more point. To come back he, on okay, that. one more point. In, he, that's coming from Exodus 3.14, where Moses, where God says to Moses, tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. So when he claims to be the I am who sent Moses, mm -hmm. he's claiming to be the God of Moses. And we know that the Jews understood that because 
in the very next verse, in verse 59, they picked up stones to stone him to death for what they considered to be blasphemy. And we can go further on, but I'll let you speak. Okay, so who did Jesus say that he was given the authority to forgive sins? He says, I have the authority. Has he ever said within the Bible anywhere that it was given to him? Or did he originally have it? Because I am quite sure, and I can't give you the Bible first, I'm well, sorry, I should be able to, but I can't, that if you, if you look within the Bible, Jesus claims that it was given to him. Now, if it was given to him, then he didn't originally have it. So yes, I agree with you that Jesus was given, as he said, the authority to forgive sins and other things as well, and perform miracles. Some people cite the miracles of Jesus as evidence that he was divine. But as we know, Moses performed miracles as well because God gave Moses authority in, uh, in many ways. God gave Moses many authorities, actually. But no one claims divinity for, for Jesus. Um, Moses. Was, for, for Moses, sorry. And Moses said that eventually what will come is a, is a prophet like me. Now Christians say that when Moses was, refer, was, was referring to Jesus, a, a prophet like me, not a God, and the Jews were not, when they waited for the Messiah, they were not waiting for, um, for God to come down as a man, because as it says in the Old Testament, God is not a man, God cannot be a man. Um, and it's made very clear throughout the Old Testament, the, the Ten Commandments, God is one, he is not a man, he, he, the, I have no gods besides me, it's, it's made absolutely clear that God can never be a man and he can only be God. Um, you, you made so many other points, I'm trying to keep yeah, up with the other ones. Yeah, just do with what you can. Um, then, so yeah. the other one, Christians get a little bit confused um, and they take the words from the Bible without actually knowing perhaps the original, the original words and what they really mean. Lord is a good one. Now Lord, in the, if you look at because obviously the New Testament is in Greek, so Kyrios. that word Lord is Kyrios, right? Kyrios, you go to, to Cyprus or Greece now and say Kyrios. Yazo Kyrios. The man's not going to say to you, will you think I'm God? No, because it means sir or master. It's a polite way to talk to a man. You know, when Christians read this Lord in the book, because they, that Lord can also be attributed to God, it's a misinterpretation. And we need to be very careful. We do need to go back. You can look on, we're lucky with the internet now. You can look and see what these exact interpretations are. And Lord must never be misinterpreted. Kyrios must never be misinterpreted okay. to mean God. Okay, so let me pick you up on a couple of the points. Um, you said that Moses has the authority to perform miracles. So, you know, but no one claims Moses to be God, okay? I understand what you're saying, okay? But Moses was given the power to perform miracles by God. And Jesus claims in John 8, 58, to be that I am who sent him. So Jesus is claiming to be the God who yeah. gave Moses power to perform miracles, yeah. okay? So that's, where, that's how I would answer you there. Can I come back on that one, I am? You can, one second, okay? Uh, you also said, that um, God, is not, God is not a man, okay? The Bible says clearly God is not a man. You're right, it does say that, but when, what's the context of that? Do you know where that's found? Numbers, numbers. Uh, and somewhere else. Okay, I so believe it, it says it's okay, twice. So it's found in Numbers, you're right. But the problem is you only quote half the verse. The rest of the verse says, see ya, the rest of the verse says, he is not a man that he should lie. That he should lie. Yeah. That's the context. You, all due respect, left that out. Okay. The context is he's not a man that he should lie. The Bible says elsewhere, let every man be a liar and let God be true. Mm -hmm. So the context is God is not a liar. Perfect. It doesn't say God cannot become a man because we see in Philippians chapter 2, clearly it says Jesus was in the form of God, verses 5 to 8. Jesus was in the, fo in the form of God mm -hmm. and he did not consider equality with God. So he had that equality with God. As something to grasp onto, but he emptied himself and took on the form of a servant. Okay, I think that, second, is, the best, that is the best. That is the best verse. Last to, point to support the divinity. I want to support the divinity of Jesus. I want to pick you it's up. The best one. I want got. to. I want to pick you it's up. The only one you got. I want to pick you up on the curios. Okay, you're right. In 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 you know Greek language, you could say curios to mean like a, like a, as you say a master. It can have that meaning, but mm. we know that language and words only have a meaning in a given context. Okay. And one very clear passage that has that context of Jesus being Lord, and not just Lord in the sense you're saying, but actually, actually God, mm -hmm. is uh, John 20, 28. Do you know what that says? Go on. In John 20, 28, okay. Uh, it's basically, to give you the context, it's after the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Jesus appears to the disciples. Yeah. All of them are there but Thomas. Thomas is not there. Mm -hmm. And Thomas, you know, famous, famously known as Doubting Thomas, mm -hmm. he says that I will not believe unless I see the nails in his hands and, and the wound in, in his side. Yeah. And, he, and Jesus turned back up. Thomas saw him and he said, my Lord and my God. And if you want to quote the Greek, in the Greek, that's very strong language. To translate that in English, 
it would be like saying the Lord of me and the God of me. So what does Jesus say? If Jesus is not God, okay, he would have to have said to Thomas, do not call me that. I'm not Lord and I'm not God. Certainly not the God part. But what did Jesus say? You believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who believe and haven't seen. So I would say that if you're going to try to use places like John to disprove the deity of Christ, it cannot be done. Because even in the beginning of John's Gospel, uh, John chapter 1 verse 3, I can have to let me come back. On you that can, one. you can. John chapter 1 verse 3 says that everything that has been made was made by Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if everything that was ever created was created by Christ, then he cannot be part of that creation. Wow. Therefore, he's not creation, he's creator. And mm -hmm. we can go there if you disagree with my exegesis. Okay, let me come back. John, what you're talking about is poetic language, it's very ambiguous, and it can be very open to interpretation. But I know it's a go to for Christians to prove the divinity. And so it should be. Let's talk about Thomas. What did he believe? Did he, are you saying that he is Jesus saying to him that he believed now that he is God, even though he never taught that throughout any of his sermons at all? No point did Jesus ever teach that he was God, but suddenly Thomas has got it. Was that the topic of discussion? No. The topic of discussion was doubting Thomas. Was not not that whether Thomas was doubting whether Jesus was God. Thomas was doubting whether Jesus has been resurrected. And, and then he believed that he had been resurrected. He just seen someone who falls dead, he's got holes in his hands, he's got holes in his feet. Oh my, oh my God! Am I saying that you're good? Am I just amazed that you've got holes in your hands and your feet and now you're alive? Is that, if that's all you've, is that what you've got? It has to, it has to come along with the teachings of Jesus as well. Okay. Otherwise it can simply be seen as, uh, as you could say blasphemy, that's too strong a word, but certainly amazement, like, is... All due respect, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think the only one of us that's committing blasphemy would be yourself. Because oh, I, that's because, harsh. Well, no, <laughs> let, let, let me just, I, I say that not out of hatred, I say that because I, I genuinely am concerned for your, your, your state, because you believe, I would say, a, a false gospel. Um, because, you do, because you deny the deity of Christ. Yeah, so absolutely. Let, so, let me just, absolutely. so let me just point this out. I've shown you passage after passage mm. where Jesus is clearly teaching that he is God. You said he doesn't teach his God, okay? No. I believe he does. Let's go to a clear place. And you, you all due respect, um, ignored John chapter 1 verse 3. I haven't ignored it. So, I'm okay, saying well, you, poetic okay. language. So, so, very John, open, so John 1 3, so John 1 3, when it says that Jesus is the creator of all things, that's poetic. Wait, John, read it to me please. John chapter 1 verse 3, okay? And I won't even go to John 1 1. Do you, do you mean the words and the word became flesh? Well, let's go there, John chapter 1 okay. verse 3. Yeah. John chapter 1 verse 3. Um, all things came into being through him, mm -hmm. and without him not one thing came into being, what has come into being. Mm -hmm. So if everything has come into being by him, mm -hmm. that excludes him from coming into being. Right. So therefore he's not part of creation, he's creator. Well, but, but, so, but let me just continue. You yeah. said that nowhere does Jesus teach his God. Can I come back on that point? You, Otherwise you have to let me respond to the question. You can, but can I bring one point up? Okay, so you can say it's poetic, I disagree, I think the language is quite clear. If you go to Colossians chapter 1, uh, Paul echoes those words, he also says the same thing. Okay, okay. so if you want to go to, uh, you know, t Jesus doesn't teach his divine in any sense of, in any way, shape or form, well, I think we've already walked through, through uh, a few scriptures already, but let's go to John 5, okay? Mm -hmm. In John 5 verse 17, Jesus says some extraordinary words. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them, this is speaking to the Jews, mm -hmm. My father is working and I am working also. For this reason the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but was also calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal with God. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, so I would say if he's making himself equal with God, mm -hmm. that's clearly a that's clearly a claim to deity. No prophet can make themselves equal with God. One second. The Jews understood what he was saying, but let's continue. Jesus you said you can absolutely my last point and you can you can jump in. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The, son, the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he is doing, and will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Indeed, just as the Father raises the dead and gives life, so also the Son gives life to whomever he wishes. This doesn't sound like a prophet so far, okay? The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that, and this is the key part, verse 23, mm -hmm. so that all may honour the Son just as they honour the Father. So I would say, how do we honour the Father? Through our worship, through our prayer. So if Jesus says we are to honour him in the same way we honour his Father, then we are to honour him through uh, our prayer, 
through our worship and he actually does go on later on in John 14 to say that we can pray to him. So I would say all of this is clearly divine. No prophet can claim such a thing without it being considered blasphemy. Well, with John 1, I would say if we go back to, the, to, to Genesis, we're talking about the Word of God. Now, the Word of God brings all things into creation. That's what Genesis taught, has, has taught us. So the Word of God brings everything into creation. So it's ambiguous to say that, to, to, to say that, that that means Jesus is God. What was your next point? Because you made John answer. chapter 5 is what I just read to you. So in John 5, Jesus says, the way you honour the Father... Oh, hang on, let me jump in, because I remember Go that. ahead. You were talking about the, the, about the accusation. Many accusations were made about Jesus. What accusation these are did accusation I make? that you make yourself equal with God. This is the accusation that the Pharisees made against him. You can't use the accusations. Okay. Okay. To, in order to I, I understand that, but the point is, Jesus doesn't say, "Hold on, guys, you've misunderstood me." He goes on to make a stronger case by saying, "The way you honour the Father, you should honour me in the same way." If he was trying to, if they had made a mistake in their interpretation of his words, then he should have cleared that up. But the fact he didn't, and he went on to say, the way you honour the Father is the way you should honour me. Which, if you continue reading, they saw that as blasphemy. Okay. And rightly so, if he's just a prophet. Well, he, he, he would say, because he's God's messenger, God has sent him to give God's message. So he should be honoured, because he's bringing God's message. Did any prophet, that makes sense. Did any prophet ever say, honour me the exact way you honour God? Did any prophet say that? So honour me the exact same way? Did, did any prophet say, honour me the way you honour God? Um, they did not. Well, did you, well, does that mean that Jesus considers himself to be God? I believe he absolutely considers, considers himself to be God. From John 1, John... I know that you, John, John, I know that you do, John, but we're John, studying particular, John, John, particular... John 5, John 8, John 10, John 17, John 20. Mm. The, whole way, the whole way through John. Mm. Through Mark, I've showed you from the beginning of Mark, Jesus is God, mm. according to the prophecy in Isaiah 40, verse 3. I'll give I've you, I'll you, give you a good this. example of how he's more exalted. With, with the um, the with the fish, you know, when he fills up the, the nets with fish. Now in Mark, it wasn't so seen as, ex as so extraordinary because it doesn't say they worshipped him. When it's described, I believe, in Luke, it says the disciples gave him worship. And you're saying that Jesus received worship. If we look at the Greek words which is used, I'm sorry, I can't remember what that Greek word is. I know it begins with S. And it is, a, it's right, it's, it, 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 it doesn't, it's not only attributed to God, which is what worship would be. It can also mean reverence and it's also been attributed to other people and it's not been exclusively given to God. It can worship, you can say my worship. And again, it's another word which has been taken out of context. And when you look at that two scenarios, it has to be backed up. Has, you can't just say, well, it's been exalted in certain verses within Mark, within John, perhaps Luke. It has to be a consistent message throughout the entire Bible. Okay. And it simply, is, it simply isn't in that, okay, in that, so in that sense. All, all can, I come back, can I come to some of my points a little bit? You can, but can I just say one thing to what you just said? I think, I think, all due respect, you're either not listening or you don't want to hear it because you're saying that it's not a consistent message throughout the Gospels. I've shown you from Mark where Jesus is portrayed as God from chapter 1, the very first three verses, and then also um, chat, we what, one sec, we did, no, we didn't disprove it. You can say it's disproved, but it's not. You didn't give me any good evidence to say it's disproved. Okay, so it's one, one, one second, one second. No, no, no. John chapter, no, Mark chapter one, verse three mm. and two, uses the prophecy in Isaiah chapter forty and applies that to Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. So, you, all due respect, you you say you've disproved it. You haven't even touched on it. Mm. I've shown you in John's gospel from chapter one, chapter five, chapter eight, chapter I um, mentioned chapter ten, chapter mm. seventeen. We can go to um, chapter. Uh, chapter 20 but not only that but what makes what, you why, 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 why do we just stick with John's gospel why do we ignore John's epistles because if you look in John's epistles mm. John, John in uh, 1 John 5 20 mm. actually refers to Jesus as the true God many okay. many Muslims will say that in John 17 3 it calls the father the only true God well why do we ignore all of all of John's writings because in John chapter 5 1 John 5 20 it says these words here we go and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and that we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, he is the true God and eternal life. So Paul says there, to be in his Son is to be in the true God because he's he... about the Father though. He, no, it's not. Look, in his Son, no, he look, is the... In his Son, yeah. he is the true God. The yeah. Son is the true God. In his Son. So in his God Son, is... look, read the words. In his Son, he is the true God and eternal life. So, about the father. About the father. so even though it says the Son, 
he is the he is the true God, you're still saying that's talking about the Father. Read that to me again because right. I, I And we are in him who is true, in his son. He is the true God and eternal life. So you can say well that's about the Father. Yeah. It says it's the Son. Okay. Um, Listen, I'll tell you what, all due respect. <laughs> I feel like I'm. Well, let, I, let me. I'll let you no, have the last word. No, 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 no. Don't wrap it down. Yeah, we I'll can go on much longer no, than this. Know, don't shut I'll, down the conversation. I'm not please. shutting down the conversation. We started this off to... talking about the gospels, the four gospels. But you're not addressing. And any you're points. moving away from the four but gospels. You're not addressing any points the because gospels, it becomes pointless. Hang on. Now you're saying the conversation is pointless, and you want to shut down the conversation. What's wrong with looking at the gospels? The There's gospels no. is supposed to be the message of Jesus where he comes. The good, the good news is what the gospel means. I'm asking you from the gospels. If you can't give me the evidence from the gospels. And that's a problem. Okay. If you can't back it up consistently throughout the words that Jesus spoke and said, then we've got a problem. Let's focus on what Jesus said. Now, if we were lucky enough to be around at the time of Jesus and actually be at one of his sermons, wouldn't that be a great thing? Like, well, you mean like John chapter 5, which to you ignore? Actually be in one of his sermons. Like John 5. Many of these sermons are written here in the thing which he was talking about. Now, not one of these teachings that, God, that Jesus comes across that Jesus expresses, not one of them at any point is he teaching anybody in these multitudes that he is that he is God. Not one point. A, okay. good, a good example of this is the scribe where he comes and he says to him, what is the most important to love commandment? To so yeah. love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and to love your neighbor. Now, do you honestly think that that scribe, without having the Bible, as you said, he didn't have the New Testament at that time. He hasn't read it, it wasn't published yet, right? Did that scribe, could he possibly have walked away from that conversation believing that the man he just spoke to is God? Of course he didn't. Can I Why answer would that? he? Please let me finish. Now the Christians say that one of the most important doctrine of Christianity is to believe that Jesus is God. This man walking away, he just spoke to Jesus. And yet I can't see any reason why he would, on God's green earth, ever believe the man he just spoke to okay. was God. So by that logic, okay, a certain particular Jew said he's not God, therefore we should accept that. He didn't say he's not one God. Second, one, okay, not okay, one second. So, uh, so, a, so a particular Jew who walks away, who probably refused to believe Jesus was no, God. No, I didn't say therefore, that. Therefore, that's a good argument. No, so when I show you the Jewish authors who wrote the New Testament who did say Jesus was God, doesn't say should we believe that? It doesn't and say this, it. All due respect, it doesn't all due, say all due it. respect. No, one it. second, all due respect, okay? You're twisting my head. I'm not twisting not anything. I'm, I'm simply... Uh, no, I'm not taking saying. what you've said to the logical conclusion. You're hang saying, on, one sec on. no, no, one second. No, it's not fair to say, no, no, this is second. not a debate if you're, you're doing no, no, that, you're, you're not telling, letting me make my point. I just let you you're make the point, point, and now I'm speaking, you're, you're interrupting twisting, me. You're twisting Listen, my point. Listen, now you're interrupting me. You're twisting I, my point. I showed you, okay? I didn't say what he, okay, the only I didn't say whether he did or didn't believe he was God or not. One second, one second. The only one who's twisting anything is yourself. You're saying, I haven't showed you anywhere in the Gospels that prove Jesus to be God. Mm. I've shown you Mark 1, using Isaiah 40 mm. uh, verse 3 to show Jesus is God. But for the people listening, have I shown Jesus is God? Yes, yes or no? Thank you, <laughs> yes I have. All due respect, you're the only one who can't see it because mm. you're coming with this... One, one second. On. Because you're coming with the presupposition of Sabalianism. And I'm saying Sabalianism from the very early church was condemned as a heresy. Now look, all due respect, I am going to wrap this up. You have to wrap it up. Because it's the same what happened to me last week when I second, debated Kay. I have to wrap it up because they're wrong and they've lost the debate. I'm happy well, to do okay, it any other listen, time listen, you want. At the end of the day, the, re <laughs> the reason why I shut the conversation short... Because you lost the debate. I've lost the debate, okay. So, <laughs> I've shown you where Jesus is God. I understand you've you. Would... You've ignored every passage I've Avenue. said. I know and the passages I've lost, you know. I've lost the debate. I know the passages you're talking about. So you know the passages I'm talking about. Then mm. when I said to you, what do they say before I quoted them, you said, oh, I don't know. I didn't say okay. I don't know. Do you know what? Take care. You have to go. You have to yeah. walk away. I'm walking away. Because, because you lost the debate. I lost it. Okay, tell I me how I lost. I can carry on going. Tell me how I lost. I can carry on going. Explain to me how I lost. you're walking away. No, I'm walking because away. Because anymore. this is no longer a debate. No, you're not engaging with any points. Because you're walking away. You're not engaging with anything. I can give you lots more points, but you don't want to debate You're not engaging with any points. I don't want to debate them. No, like, listen. Okay, no, so okay, so when, okay, so you're saying you're accusing me now of not addressing your points. Did, did you one second, you're running one second. away? Did you address Mark? Same as Kay last did, week. Did you ran away? Yeah, we all run away because you're such yeah. a great debater. Did you address? Mark, did side. you address Mark one, two, and three? Isaiah forty verse three. John five. What makes John you think 10, that Isaiah John, forty three one is talking about God? John, John seventeen. Go back to Isaiah forty three. One second. John seventeen. One second. John seventeen. John twenty. 
Okay. Let's stick to your first point. 1 John 5.20. What makes See, you think that Isaiah is so talking me, about God? So you're telling me Why do you think that although Isaiah I show you all of those passages, God? although I show you Focus all of those passages, you, to you, you, totally, to me why you, you totally you you totally, totally ignore everything I've just said, and then you have the audacity to say you're walking away from me. You've run away from the whole discussion. I'm stood here saying let's debate for another half an hour. Let's debate for another half an hour. No, but you were saying, no, we've got to shut down the conversation. I've got to turn off the camera. Okay, because okay, now, now, okay, like now, 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 okay, now I will end with this with this mic drop scenario, okay? <laughs> You've just said, show me where Isaiah 40 verse 3 yeah. is talking about God. Uh -huh. Listen to Isaiah 40 verse 3, mm. okay? A voice cries out, same language in Mark chapter 1, a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, and we don't want to debate anymore. Shut off.